Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Protection Dog Podcast. And my name is Joel Riles, and today we are going to be talking about the mindset of being a victim or being a victor. And uh, before we get into that, though, let's go ahead and recognize our sponsor for today's podcast. K9 Academy Online is today's sponsor. K9 Academy Online is making dog training easy. They have training for obedience, service dogs, tracking, like search and rescue type tracking, uh, both hostile and non-hostile, protection work, and tactical training. You can contact K9 Academy Online or find out more information about them on their website. It's the letter K. The number nine academy online that's k9 academy online.com you can also email them at joel j-o-e-l at k9 academy online.com you can text them with any kind of questions 813-836-9244 they're also on facebook with the handle at k9 academy online and on Instagram at the same handle, at K9 Academy Online. And then they post training videos so you can go over and get an idea of how the instruction is going to be and things like that uh, on YouTube. And you can search K9 Academy Online over on YouTube. And as soon as we get a hundred subscribers over there, I'm able to get a uh, direct URL so please, if you do go over and check out the YouTube channel, uh, which I would encourage you to do, please make sure that you subscribe over there so that we uh, can reach some of those um, minimums and get some of that stuff going, which will make it more easy for you to find it, as well as um, help uh, get it in front of more people. The only other thing uh, I'll mention is we uh, still have puppies available. If uh, our Dutch litter is pretty much all sold, we have uh, some Malinois left from our Malinois litter, and we have a we have actually two Dutch German Shepherd cross litters coming up in the fall. So if you want one of our pups and you contact us, and both of the litters are already sold out, uh, we will put your name on a waiting list and uh, and contact you as soon as we have the dogs bred later in the year so we have an all black female german shepherd they'll be bred with striker uh, which you can find on the fortress canine instagram channel and uh, we also have a black and tan uh, bicolor female german shepherd that will be bred with him as well so he is completely unrelated to ratchet we're uh, getting a couple of extra diverse lines in our genetics so that we can continue our breeding program without having to do any kind of crosses. And so that is what those litters are for later in the year. All right. So with our um, housekeeping taken care of, let's go ahead and get into the topic for today, which is be a victor, not a victim. And uh, so be a victor, not a victim. So there's a couple of really, uh, I guess, foundational thoughts when it comes to uh, this thought process. And this is something that is highly, highly prevalent in our society today. Um, people are being encouraged all over the place to that, that they're victims. Right? Oh, you're a victim of this, or you're a victim of that. And people tend to naturally fall into that thought process anyway, where they kind of tend to, oh, so-and-so did something you know, bad to me, so I'm a victim. It's not my fault, it's their fault. Okay, all of these kinds of thought processes are examples of thinking like a victim rather than a victor. So one of the important things that I want to point out, and, and we're going to discuss what all of this has to do with dog training and dog handling uh, at the end, but it's important to understand that one of the important aspects of this thought process is that you cannot be happy. You cannot live a happy life. You cannot have a joyful life 
if you view yourself as a victim. Now I'm not, we're gonna get into the differences between actually being a victim versus um, not being a victim, okay? And I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about how you view yourself. You cannot be happy. You cannot have a highly successful life unless you stop viewing yourself as a victim. And that doesn't mean that sometimes you won't be victimized, but it means you have to stop viewing yourself as the victim. All right? So, and I've got a glare on my screen today, so I'm gonna pause for a second. Um, all right, so that is, is point number one. Point number one is the, you have to get over the victim mentality. You have to stop seeing yourself as a victim. Now, a lot of people uh, that are listening to this right now will say, yeah, but you don't understand X, Y, or Z happened to me, and so I really am a victim. Right, so it's important right now that we make the distinction between being a victim, it must be like 13, my voice just cracked there. The distinction between being a victim and having a victim mentality, okay? So you can be a victim without having a victim mentality. Um, there, there's a story that I know of where a young man um, he was a very talented uh, musician. He actually was getting ready to start playing professionally um, with some of the big orchestras. He uh, had a, a moderate sport career. He was getting a full scholarship to uh, a, a good college. I believe it was baseball. He was, a, a, I think it was a pitcher, but he played baseball, had a full ride scholarship because of his uh, baseball playing capabilities and got hit by a drunk driver and he, um, he lost the ability to play his instrument and to play baseball, right? So if anybody was a victim, he was a victim of this drunk driver who hit him when he shouldn't have been dri drinking and driving, uh, hit his vehicle, caused him to have injuries in his hands, which allowed him to lose both his ability to play the trumpet and his ability to play baseball. Right, so if anybody could sit around and go, oh, I'm a victim, it was him. But he is today a highly successful person. Um, I believe he does trading today. He's either in the, in the banking or the trading industry. And he's highly successful at it because he never saw himself as a victim. It doesn't mean that I'm sure he struggled with frustrations and, and being angry and things of that nature, right? But if you allow yourself to fall into the victim mentality, to brood on those things, to become bitter about all that kind of stuff, you end up focused on who to blame rather than focused on how to get past everything, how to get ahead, how to progress through whatever it is that you're facing, right? So that is one example of the difference between having a victim mentality and a victor mentality and this person had every right to claim victimhood, right? So if, if he wanted to claim it, he would have had the right to do so, but let's consider what would have happened if he did claim that, cling to his quote unquote rights as a victim, even let's just say he got a multi-million dollar settlement out of it, right? So he claims his victim mentality, he sues the guy for what happened, he wins and gets multi-millions of dollars, he is still not going to have a happy life because he's allowed all of that bitterness to build up. So even though he's gotten a bunch of money out of it, he would still look at it as it's not enough, uh, I still deserve more, blah, blah, blah. When you allow bitterness to get a hold on your life, it doesn't matter how much you get, you always feel like you're owed more. You, you start to develop this entitlement mentality that says, yeah, yeah, well, I got that, but it's still not enough because I'm a victim, right? So the victim mentality is one that it's never satisfied. You, no matter what happens, no matter how, um, you know, either you go and, and do lawsuits or whatever, or how they try to make up for it, it's never ever enough. The victim mentality 
is like fire. It's never satisfied. It wants more and more and more to consume. All right? So you can either get over it and move forward or you can continue to claim and cling to your victimhood status and just be miserable. But at the end of the day, if that's what you choose to do and it is a choice, there's nobody to blame for your dissatisfaction in life but yourself if that's the approach you take to life. And again, we're not saying that there aren't people who have experienced um, mistreatment that are victims to one degree or another. That's not what we're discussing. We're discussing how you view yourself and how you choose to deal with those situations. Do you claim your victimhood status and use it as an excuse to be bitter and angry? Or do you get over it and realize, you know what? Everybody mistreats everybody. And that's the reality of the situation. Everybody mistreats everybody. Nobody treats everybody exactly the way they should. That doesn't mean everybody mistreats everybody all the time, right? But human beings are selfish. Human beings do things that are in their best interest and often, and sometimes without even realizing, they're, that when they do things for their own self-interest, they do things that have some form of negative impact on the people around them, right? And I'm not saying that they're even doing this intentionally, but they don't have a full spectrum view of all the people around them and how their decisions are going to affect them. And they make a decision, they do something that's in their own best interest, and then it has some kind of a negative impact on the people around them. And so you're going to be impacted negatively by the people around you all the time, and you are going to be constantly negatively impacting people around you, right? And so because this is the way human interaction goes, you can either choose to just forgive people and understand that that's how it works, that's just how human interaction exists, or you can ex you know, look at everything as if it's some kind of a personal affront to you claim your victimhood status and be miserable for your whole life. And, uh, and if that's what you do, you have no one to blame but yourself for the, um, the state of your mental situation, all right? So there are actual victims and there are a lot of people who think that they are victims when they're not, okay? So now as we just discussed, everybody can claim victimhood somehow, right? But when somebody does something unintentionally that hurts your feelings or that, you know, maybe they, they ate the last something in the refrigerator that you bought and were saving for a special occasion and they didn't know, right? Whatever it is, it could be something petty like that or it could be something significant that they do unintentionally, that is not victimizing you. Now that, that may be you're the victim of a circumstance, but you're not the victim of that person if something like that happens, right? But you could claim that you are victim of that situation, of that person, right? So at the end of the day, everybody can claim that they're the victim of somebody. And the reason that's important is because if that's how society goes, if that's the direction that we allow society to continue moving, then we end up in this ultra polarized society where everybody is enemies of everybody else because everybody can claim that they've been victimized by somebody in that group. And that's one of the reasons you see that w within the opposing perspectives of the political sphere right now, there's no goodwill that can cross the, the aisle, right? If you try and, and have a, uh, a pleasant conversation with somebody you disagree with on a political perspective, People will get angry at you for even having a, a, a kind conversation because they have such a victim mentality that they feel like it's impossible to do that. It's impossible to have a polite conversation because those people are victimizing us, right? Rather than going, you know what? It's okay to disagree. Like, you, if, if you are so stuck on your perspective that you can't possibly even fathom the idea that you could be wrong, 
and that it's good to have conversations you dis with people you disagree with, those kinds of conversations actually enrich our society. They help to bring all of our viewpoints back towards some level of center rather than polarizing everything. Because no matter what you believe, you're wrong about something. Right? And this is something that's really important to understand. No matter what you believe, you're wrong about something. So having discussions with people who disagree with you help open your eyes to the things you're wrong about and hopefully help to open their eyes to the things they're wrong about. And we all begin to coalesce, to center, to move toward the things that we are all right about and that we agree on rather than viewing everything from an opposition perspective and polarizing, right? And, and creating a situation where it's the thems versus the us's and because the thems versus the us's continues to get more and more and more entrenched, more and more and more intense, and then you have more and more and more likelihood that violence is going to break out over these things rather than hey, let's have the discussion. Hey, let's actually you know, figure out where am I wrong and where are you wrong? Where am I right and where are you right? Where can, do we agree and where can we find common ground rather than constantly having these disagreements become more and more bitter, right? And the victim mentality drives polarization. The victor mentality drives unification. Because if you're a victor, you're not afraid of having a discussion with somebody you agree or you disagree with. Even when you end up being the one that's wrong, you're like, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Let's have the conversation, right? You're willing to actually view the opposing perspective and give it a fair trial, if you will, in your mind, a fair, uh, per, you know, uh, evaluation so that you can find the areas where they're right and you'll find the areas where you you know you kind of bolster and strengthen your own perspective right and so that is one of the effects of the differences between the victimhood mentality versus the victor mentality right so Real quick, um, I think I've hit most of these, but I'm just gonna run down my list. We have even actual victims do not benefit from embracing the victimhood mentality. Um, that was in the discussion that we had with the guy uh, that lost his ability to play his instrument and his um, sport. If he had embraced the victimhood mentality, he would not be the successful person that he is today. Whereas when he said, well, that happened, it sucks, I don't like it, but I'm going to find a way to overcome this. He embraced the victor mentality. He was able to have a highly successful career, life, family, and now he has a very joyful, happy life rather than always focusing on what it was he lost, right? Okay, um, those who are not victims are only making their own lives less joyful by playing the victimhood mentality. So again, we kind of addressed that briefly, but you, whenever you embrace victimhood, you make your own life worse. Now you do also make the lives of the people around you worse frequently, but the one it has the biggest impact on is you personally, right? Because if, if you're near somebody who has a victimhood mentality, if you adopt the victor mentality, you're gonna improve your life, right? And, and you, you reduce the amount of negative input that that person brings to your life. But if that person also embraces the victor mentality, then yay, that's a win-win uh, for everybody. And if you embrace the victor mentality and they don't, be the light, be the shining beacon for them, and then don't be bitter, don't be like nanny nanny boo boo if they start to come around. Be happy and joyful that they are going to have a more joyful life if they come around rather than saying, I told you so type of mentality, right? You you will help them more and then you will benefit as a side product of it if you encourage them rather than just gloating about it. And then everyone can claim that they've been a victim by someone. We went into that in quite a bit of detail, so I'm not going to continue to harp on it. 
Um, I think that we've covered kind of my perspective on the negative aspects of claiming victimhood. And so now let's shift over and talk about what it actually means to be a victor and to claim uh, that as your state of mind, all right? So first of all, what is a victor? Well, first, the, for, the first thing is the victor accepts that bad things happen and they decide to do their duty, their job, they, they decide to pursue um, solutions rather than focus on all of the problems. Okay, so a victor is someone who drives past things rather than someone who avoids or wallows in the negative, right? And so when I say avoids the negative, um, that has a lot of implications. People who are trained with me will see uh, the, the connotation or the connection pretty quickly. Whenever we find an issue that the dog struggles with, we don't avoid that issue, we drive into that issue, right? We say, that's something you don't like, we're going to go into that issue so much that it, you no longer care about it anymore, right? So it could be, you know, carts at the grocery store, it could be uh, other dogs, it could be whatever it is. When we find a problem, we don't avoid the problem, we drive into the problem. And uh, so when you do that in your own life, you see a problem, you basically have two choices. You can be like, oh no, there's a problem, this is terrible. Or you go, hey look, there's a problem, how do I overcome that problem? And when your perspective is always, how do I overcome problems, you have now adopted the victor mentality rather than the victim mentality of, oh no, poor little me, woe is me, my whole life just fell apart because now I have a problem. Right, your life will never be problem free. So if you have the victim mentality, you'll always be able to find problems. If you have the victor mentality, no matter what problems come your way, you go, no big deal. All we have to do is find a way to win anyway, to get past this anyway, to do whatever it is we're trying to do anyway. Or if the problem is so great that we can't move in that direction anymore, the victor says, well, that door is obviously closed, what else can I do? And the victor is willing to readjust, reevaluate, move in directions where they can succeed and have success, and they're also willing to do the hard work, to push, to fight, to try and continue doing the thing they want to do if that's truly what they want, right? So they can go either route, but they don't sit around and wallow and whine and complain because things aren't just the way they want them to be. Right? Life is hard. You're never going to have things handed to you on a silver platter. The people who are successful are the people who are willing to face the problems and the hard times and, and the things they don't like and drive through and figure out how to do things anyway. Okay? The next thing that describes a victor is they do not blame other people for their problems. They take responsibility for their own lives. Um, so I've gone through situations like this where I've been around people and I'm not an easy person to be around. I tell people that right off the bat, especially if they want to do anything where they're going to be uh, in a lot of close contact with me, right? So when, when I'm dealing with a client, um, I, I, ne I don't push my clients more than they can deal with because they're paying me to train them to do something and I'm happy to do that. But when somebody is, is working for me, Right, I have a very high expectation of both myself and them, and it can often be something that's very hard to deal with. And I'm looking for people who adopt the victor mentality. Those are people I want on my team. The people who whine and complain and, oh, woe is me, this is so terrible. They get two choices. They either quit or they become a victor. And, and so, um, what we're looking for, for me personally, what people who are looking for uh, hiring, you know, well-paying jobs, people who are looking for people to promote, the people who are successful in their own businesses, these are the people who go, I don't care why, I care that. So let me flesh that out a little bit. I don't care why you didn't get the job done. I care that it didn't get done and I expect you to find a solution and make it happen, right? Victors are people who go, wow, 
that's really hard or we can't do it that way, I'm gonna find a solution, right? So sometimes when I'm training somebody new, um, I have two different ways that I approach things with them because I wanna see that they do both. One is I give very detailed uh, instructions and I want to see, are they gonna follow my detailed instructions? Because if I give detailed instructions, there's a reason I'm giving a detailed instruction list because I know if you don't follow these instructions, bad things happen, right? And so I give a very detailed set of instructions and I expect those instructions to be followed in a very specific detailed way. And so that's one way that I'll test people. I don't care that it was hard. I don't care that you didn't think it was going to work. I gave instructions. I expect those instructions to be followed. The other aspect of things, and, and this happens with employers all over the country. If you get instructions, that person expects you to follow those instructions. Victors go, yep, I'm gonna do what I was told because I don't know what I'm doing here, but that person does, so I'm gonna do what I was told. Then the flip side to that coin, and it's the exact same coin, is this. Here's the job, get it done, right? No instructions other than this is the end result, go do it and I don't want them constantly coming back to me saying well how do I do this and how do I do that and how do I do the other I told you what I wanted done figure it out go do it right I want to see is that person going to put their mind to solving the problem and then drive into it or is that person gonna sit around and wallow in their misery oh it's too hard it's so bad he didn't give me all the information I needed to do it Right? If they don't do it exactly the way I would have done it or exactly the way I wanted it, then I say, you did great. You figured out how to get the job done. Next time, it will be easier if you do this, that, or the other. Right? So people that are looking to add people to their teams, people who are looking for businesses to work with, people who are looking to be around other people who are successful are looking for those two things. Will you follow instructions even when it doesn't seem like that's the best thing to do? And will you figure out how to solve problems even when you don't have all the information you wish you had to do it just the way that it would be like the perfect ideal way? And, and we see this a lot in people's lives. We see people who say, I'm almost ready to launch my business, but it's not quite right yet, right? That's a subtle form of the victim mentality of I don't have everything I wish I had to be able to do it just the way I wish I could do it, so I'm not gonna do it. Whereas the victor goes, close enough, let's go, right? And it's, it's a subtle difference in, way, in how they look at things, but it's a massive difference on the far end. And the people who have embraced the victim mentality are the people who live off the government dole and get mad at the millionaires who run these businesses and get paid a lot. But the millionaire who runs the business and got paid a lot worked his ass off to get there and was willing to take risks and took great risks, often failed multiple times before they got there. And so they are there for a reason and they're still the ones bearing the risk. Right? They're still the ones that without them, without the person who's giving the guidance at the top, that business falls apart or at the very least doesn't do a good job. And who do you think is paying all those other people who are getting decent jobs? Right? It's the person who's at the top making the decisions that make that business tons and tons of money. So, and it's not that there aren't negative sides to bureaucracy and there's, there's a lot of things that can be said about that. I'm not embracing bureaucracy because I run a small business for a reason. I don't want anything to do with these big bloated um, businesses and models and all that kind of stuff. But those people built that that way because it makes the business work. And it benefits hundreds and sometimes thousands of other people because they make enough money to be able to pay all those people enough that they can make 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars a year each. Right? So again, the difference between the victim and the victor mentality. And the third thing that victors do is they see obstacles, also sometimes referred to as problems, they see obstacles as opportunities to excel and develop character. Right? So consider this for a minute. 
most of the problems you face in life, whether they're personal problems, whether they're business problems, whatever they are, most of the problems you experience are problems that lots of other people who are trying to do things similar to what you're trying to do also experience. So why are those people successful and you are not? If you're a person who's struggling, right? If you're a victim, what you say is, oh, they're successful because they're lucky, right? But there is no such thing as luck. There is, I've developed relationships. There is, I wouldn't quit. There is, I worked when everybody else slept. There is, I made a decision that was a good decision versus a bad decision. There is, I went and did the research and I educated myself so I could make the good decisions, right? There is no luck when it comes to these things. There is who did what needed to be done and who didn't do what needed to be done. So when you're a victor, you look at the problem and you go, how can I excel? How can I use this problem to be better than everybody else because everybody else is probably experiencing a similar problem. How can I turn this problem into something that is beneficial for me and all the other people that I'm going to employ? And it also, they look at it as an opportunity to develop character. So a lot of times, a problem doesn't help you excel in your business or life, but what it does do is it prepares you to overcome other problems in the future if you develop character through it, right? So character, there's a lot of different aspects to character, but one of the things character does is character helps you have the attitude you need to have through the hard times, all right? So I hope that I've clearly painted the, the picture and the difference between the victim mentality and the victor mentality. And so I'm gonna take the last few minutes and we're gonna discuss what the heck does all this have to do with dog training and handling. Right, so if you listen to episodes eight and nine, the two episodes right before this one, um, then you know how much the mental state of the handler and how much the mental preparation in the training and the preparation for the dog, so that would also include the mental state of the trainers, how much of an impact, the huge impact that it has on the dog's performance. Right, so when you have the victim mentality and your mentality is, oh no, I got attacked, poor little me. I'm the victim of whoever this person that atta is attacking me is, the dog will have a substantially reduced performance. Now that doesn't mean that the dog still can't be helpful. Uh, maybe the dog would still save your life. Maybe they would still keep the problem from, you know, um, you know, the person stealing something from you or whatever it is they're gonna do. But the victim goes, oh no, I'm in trouble. The victor goes, stay back, don't mess with us, or you're in big trouble, right? So this mentality, and, and, and we all have some level of mix of this mentality in us. None of us, like all of our minds are schizophrenic to one degree or another, right? Uh, in one sense, we'll have a victor mentality and then we'll turn around and we'll have a victim mentality. The job for us is to recognize whenever we're like, whoa, 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 I'm acting like a victim there and go, I need to change that. I need to stop being a victim in that area, right? When people are like, oh, they're not paying us enough. Well, if you wanna get paid more, go do something that gets paid more. Don't sit around and whine and complain about it. Go do something that gets you paid more, right? That's just one example. So the mental state of the handler and the mental state of the trainer has a massive impact on the mental state of the dog that is being handled by these people. Stop. Stop. Thank you. Then the other one is, why do my dogs bite so quickly? This is me personally, right? So one of the things that I've run into with training with other people and things like that is they'll ask, why does that person's dog bite after the first or second time that we're agitating and my dog doesn't, right? I've been doing this for a month or maybe two months and my dog's still not biting like that person's dog is. So there's two answers to those types of questions. One is genetics, and a lot of that is the breeding and all of that kind of stuff, which can also be traced back to the victor-victim mentality. We're not gonna get into breeding today. But the other aspect of it is, because I've seen it with litter mates in a litter, 
right? And you get a dog that looked like it was a dominant dog that goes to somebody who has a victim mentality. And you look at another dog that was much more subservient and they go to somebody with a victor mentality. That dog excels in the protection work while the other dog, they, they make progress, but not nearly as fast, right? And people will ask, why? Why does that happen? Well, it happens because that person's attitude is one that they're gonna overcome. And your attitude is, woe is me, right? So when you take the victor mentality into your dog training and handling, those dogs excel because they are being driven by a victor mentality, whereas the other dogs are held back by the victim mentality. And even though they might make progress, they're gonna make it at a slower rate, right? So the victor says, you will not victimize me and if I do get victimized in some way or another, I'm gonna excel, I'm gonna win anyway, right? The victim goes, everybody's out to get me and they're all succeeding, right? So these are the two big differences and obviously there are, there are big variations both ways, up and down and all that kind of stuff, but those are the two big differences. I hope that you guys listening to this today will decide to be victors and not victims. You will decide to overcome, you will decide to excel no matter what obstacles and problems present themselves. And in the end, I hope that you guys have the most outstanding lives you can and that you excel and progress with your dogs at the fastest possible rate. So I hope this has been helpful to you today. I hope that you've learned something and that this is going to benefit you and your dog and your life. If you would like to contact me, you can email me at joel at fortressk9.com. That is J-O-E-L at F-O-R-T-R-E-S-S, -S, the letter K, the number nine, dot com. You can also send me a text at 813-836. 9244. If you'd like to sign up for our emails on our websites, you can do that at fortressk9.com or over at canineacademyonline.com. Both of those have email opt-in options on the websites. And I, if you don't already, I would encourage you to follow us on Facebook. Our Fortress Canine handle is at Fortress Canine Dogs, and our Canine Academy Online handle is at Canine Academy Online. Over on Instagram, we are at Fortress Canine and at Canine Academy Online, and you can search Fortress Canine or Canine Academy Online on YouTube and find both of our YouTube channels over there. And don't forget, if you're interested in getting a good family, personal, or executive protection dog puppy and doing the work yourself, you can contact us for our puppy sales. And uh, if we don't have any available at the time, we will put you on our waiting list and we will make sure that we notify you when our next litter is coming up. I hope this has been helpful to you. And until next time, train hard and stay safe.